love your support. For what? We don't even know. We have no idea what's being proposed. There's a group of guys in a back room somewhere that are making these decisions. Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri tearing into Senate Republicans for writing their health care bill in secret. Democrats are now considering stopping all Senate business to pressure Republicans to reveal details of the legislation. With me now to discuss this and much more, Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell of Michigan, former Republican presidential candidate Rick Santorum, Republican Congressman Charlie Dent of Pennsylvania, and Bakari Sellers, former South Carolina Democratic State uh, Representative. Uh, let me start uh, with you. You know, Democrats were criticized for this back when uh, the Obama team was putting together a health care bill. The fact of the matter is we did it much more openly. Right now you've got 13 men writing a bill that nobody's seen anything about that's going to affect more than 50 percent of the population is women. We already seen a very bad bill, which the president has now called mean come out. We need to be doing this in a more transparent process, Jay. L let us talk about, let me talk about the mean thing for a second. You did not vote for the Republican health care bill in the House, Congressman, but um, President Trump calling the bill mean um, to Senate Republicans, calling the Republican House bill mean, that's not going to help your colleagues, theoretically. I would think it would upset them, maybe. Uh, certainly not those who voted yes. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're clearly unhappy, but, but I, I, I agree that the, health, the House health care bill, in my view, did not provide a soft enough landing on Medicaid. Uh, there were problems there. The, uh, the tax credits were clearly insufficient. There was not enough flexibility for the states or resources to handle the Medicaid issue. So to that extent, I agree with the president. Uh, I, I didn't realize that he actually agreed with me on the issue, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 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 but, uh, but the comment wasn't obviously helpful to my colleagues who voted yes because they're pretty unhappy about it. Senator, I want to play for you some sound that you might remember. It's Senator Mitch McConnell talking about the democratic process back in 2009. This massive piece of legislation that seeks to restructure one-sixth of our economy is being written behind closed doors without input from anyone in an effort to jam it past the, not only the Senate but the American people. It's almost as if these people don't know that we can go to the videotape <laughs> library and plug these things out. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you, you can find Democrats sure, defending of it. Course. You know, and that, look, what goes around comes around. I mean, this is unfortunately how how things have been done have always been done i mean you remember back in budget deals between uh reagan and the democrats back when john diggle was running they go off to you know off to andrews air force base and right that's the way things are done they're not done in in a, in a public forum initially everything's going to have to be given the light of day i saw quotes from lisa murkowski i'm not going to vote for a bill well, of course she's not going to vote for a bill that's not she's not read everyone's going to get a chance to read the bill but there has to be some time when people get together and try to drive a consensus. And that's what's going on right now. They obviously haven't reached that point. Once they do reach a point where they feel comfortable, they'll put the bill out there. If the Democrats allow it, they'll go through a committee process. If they don't and they're, you know, they're threatening to shut things down, what's that mean? That means they, you probably have to bypass the committee because they won't be able to, to, to get committees to form because the Democrats will block it. So they could be complicit. In, in not getting the bill more light today. Bakari, so let me ask you, I mean, there is this argument that there are 52 Republican senators, and in order to get both the Ted Cruz's and Mike Lee's of the world on board with something, and then you have the Lisa Murkowski's and Susan Collins of the world, the negotiations do need to be done behind closed doors with only Republicans watching. That's the argument. Yeah, that's not a good argument. It's, a, it's an argument that's based upon hypocrisy. And even when you compare it to 2009, you had the Democratic Party, the House House Republican uh, House Democrats at that time under Nancy Pelosi's leadership, they had over 20 hearings. You know, this took a year before it passed. So this is not comparable to what happened in 2009. But I just love to see Mitch McConnell and everyone else just just cloak themselves in such hypocrisy and the travesty and why we need more Republicans with courage, like my colleague here to the right, and why we need more Republicans to stand up is because the Republican Party right now is trying to take away health insurance from 23 million people. And they are literally, literally drafting up a piece of legislation that affects one-sixth of our economy under the cover of darkness, which is 13 all-white males in the back room. And this is the problem that Americans have and why they distrust the process and why they distrust Democrats and Republicans alike. Because we moved too fast in 2009, but the Republicans didn't learn a lesson, and they are now the ones who have the ball, and it's a travesty of justice. Let's move on to uh, the Russia investigation. We have a lot of topics to cover here today. Uh, you heard uh, Jay Sekula, the president's attorney, say that when the president tweeted this, I am being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director witch hunt, 
he did not mean it literally. He did not mean that he was literally being investigated. That's kind of it, it sounded to me like what the president was doing, and this is the limitations of Twitter, the context was he was sort of repeating what the Washington Post story was, like, now, oh, I'm being investigated by, in, in other words, he's just taking a summary of what the Post article and repeated it, as opposed to saying, oh, I'm being investigated. Now, I, I get it. That's a nuance, and you can, you can roll your, roll your <laughs> eyes back on it, but that's what Jay Sekulow was saying that the president said. The problem with that is... It's Twitter, and, and, you, and you don't have context, and, it, and, it, and very credibly could be seen as the president confirming that he's being investigated. That's the problem with the president I tweeting some, like I, that. I think the president might be watching us today, and as a Democrat, just as an American, I want to give him some advice. And that advice is to simply stop tweeting about Russia, and just, if you want to move the country forward, if you want to have a better discussion, wake up in the morning and tweet about some legislative priorities. I mean, tweet about infrastructure. Put Democrats in a box. I mean, let's talk about real issues, because all he's doing is making it cloudy and murky. I imagine you agree with that. Well, I, my advice would be, yeah, stop tweeting. And, you know, Good uh, ideas. Uh, Director, Director Comey <laughs> said that uh, the president was not under investigation. Uh, take him at his word. If, there was, if, in fact, there was no collusion, well, then there's nothing to worry about. Let, direct, let uh, Mr. Mueller... Complete his work. Less is more. Say little. There's nothing to say about this if I were the president. What do you think, Congressman? I think he's absolutely right. The fact of the matter is we need to have this investigation. It needs to be done in a nonpartisan way. We need to follow the facts and follow it to the end. And at the same time, I'll tell you what, come to Michigan. We're worried about jobs. We're worried about the economy. And, we, and we're worried about health care. And we need to start focusing on these issues that are impacting working men and women every day. Do you think the I mean, I'm sure the president, this is not the first time somebody has said stop tweeting. Do you think the president, and it's not just stop, it's stop tweeting about the stuff right. that hurts him. He needs to tweet. If he, he wants just, to, yeah, sure, he wants to yeah. communicate with the American yeah, people about absolutely. his priorities. Why doesn't, because I know that he's being given this advice by lots of people in, in the White House, why does he not take the advice? He's talking, <laughs> he's talking, he's talking you have here. a relationship with him. You have a relationship with him. I, look, I just think he is, uh, he's, a, he's a fighter. He doesn't like being attacked, and, and he, he's going to fight back. And I, 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 I get that. I accept it. It worked for him in the, in, in the, in, in the campaign. It's worked for him to some degree here. But he's in, he's in a world right now where you have a special prosecutor who just hired a team of lawyers that really concerns me. This Andrew Weissman is a real concern to me. And this guy, this guy is, uh, you know, uh, Jared Kushner's uh, paper the, the, went after this guy for some of the behavior. And now we, you bring this guy in for a nonpartisan investigation. He already has a, a rub with, with Kushner. You now, the, Kush, the thing, the, the investigation's being expanded maybe to deal with Jared Kushner's. There's some real concerns about what Mueller's doing. He's obviously got the long knife out for the president. The president needs to understand this is you serious. You gotta stop and back yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I just wanna say one thing. First of all, in this week that we went through the horrible incident with um, Steve Scalise and the others, um, Thank you to people who run for office uh, and, and put themselves out there. And uh, I, I know it's probably even more nerve-wracking for people like yourselves after a week like this. So thank you. And to the dads here, happy Father's Day. To, to, to all three of you, I know you just had your daughter's wedding. Daughter's wedding uh, last so that, what weekend. What could be better? To you for, as well. Yeah. Be, what yeah. could be better? Yeah. Thank you one and all for being here. I really appreciate it.